Okay, well, uh, this is our suggestion. Okay. Right, okay. Um, we've been talking about things that inspire us. Um, it's not so much this work that inspires me, it's kind of what it signifies, and this is actually part of the work. Uh, the official name of this, according to the UNESCO World Heritage List, which I've written down because I would never remember it, is Decorated Cave of Pont d'Arc, known as Grotte Chauve Pont d'Arc Ardèche. Um, it's more famously known as um, one of the kind of best uh, prehistoric art sites, or best preserved prehistoric art sites uh, in Europe. It's towards the south of France. Uh, it was discovered in 1994 um, by the guy who it's now sort of semi-officially named after. Um, but it's pr probably about 30,000 to 32,000 years old. So it's Paleolithic. Um, what we're looking at here are um, uh, cave lions, European cave lions, who are now extinct. Um, it, the, the cave also shows evidence of bears being in there. Uh, the uh, mammalian kind, not the um, uh, <laughs> grinder kind. Um, and uh, other animals are drawn on the walls, including horses, cattle, uh, other extinct animals like mammoths, um, yeah, these Eurasian cave lions, uh, cave hyenas, uh, panthers, uh, bison, rhino, and deer, um, many of which are now extinct in their current form or completely extinct, but which human beings lived alongside in Europe for. 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 years at least, and other types of human that are also extinct live alongside us and these animals. So at some point about, say, 32,000 years ago, which um, we should remember is about 10 times the span of uh, European recorded history, um, somebody or several people uh, crawled into this cave complex uh, which at the time was near a uh, flowing river in quite a fertile valley and they did drawings of the things they saw in their everyday life um, some of them possibly semi-imaginary there's a few drawings of people um, there's a film about this cave by Werner Herzog called uh, Cave of Forgotten Dreams which you can see in 3D and you should if you can because uh, these artists, they were in there with torches and they took advantage of the contours of the cave and sometimes chipped away at the cave to make the um, images, you know, it was an early 3D cinema experience. You would crawl in with your cave if you were allowed to. These were the things we don't know. We don't know whether this was um, Tate modern of the ancient world or whether this was the pissy little back street London gallery and only five people set foot in from one year to the next of the ancient world, you know. Um, and again, we don't know about anything about the artists. I mean, it's usually assumed that they were male. They could have been male, they could have been female. It's generally kind of surmised from the heights at which the things are drawn that they were probably adult males. But, you know, they could have been women on ladders. We just don't know. Um, and again, this is one of the things I would like to draw attention to is that um, with the interpretation of, of ancient art, anything that's outside of our lifetime and peers and other people today have spoken about this idea and uh, talking about Camille Paglia and her kind of view of art through history. Um, as, soon as, thing, as soon as things pass out of uh, living memory, we tend to start kind of anthropologicalizing them. We start interpreting them as uh, evidence of, you know, cultural things. You know, we say this represents something about the culture of these people. Yeah, that may be true, but also sometimes there's other things about art that are important and that artists make art for. Sometimes pleasure, for the pleasure of themselves, for the pleasure of other people. Um, just because it's nice to see a lump on a wall and turn it into a bison, you know, the, the temptation that we all have to, you know, draw eyes on things, you know, or, you know, doodling on magazines or whatever. It's the same thing, and we're the same people, essentially. And again, uh, Piers mentioned this too, you know, that... We, they, these were anatomically, genetically modern people. They were the same as us. Their culture was different. They lived in very small groups. They probably never met more than a few dozen people in their entire lives. Um, but they had this urge. And I'm um, just keeping myself kind of on message here. Yeah, I mentioned that. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, this could be Stone Age decor as well, you know, this could have no artistic purpose at all. They could have been sitting around, getting stoned, whatever, mm -hmm. looking at the flickering, moving, because this is an early form of animation as well. As you can see in all of these drawings, they're actually, they could be interpreted as representing the diff, um, like frames in an animation. Uh, you see there's a great image of, a, of, a, of a, an extinct now rhino, it's a Megoceros, I think it's called, which had a massive horn on its forehead, and it, it's got like uh, action lines, like in a like in a comic, showing probably the the just the that second where the rhino tosses its head up and gets its horn up into the air, and it's got this series of lines, which it's just it's it's an amazing thing. Uh, but the reason this is really inspiring to me, this this cave and other things like it, and these other survivals from the ancient world, is that. These people lived in very small communities. They lived in ways that the hardship of their lives is unimaginable to people sitting in London in the 21st century, and even to most people, however hard their lives are in most parts of the world, unless you're literally living in a Stone Age society. Even the poorest people in the world have a better standard of living, generally, than these people did. They lived hand to mouth and lived in very small groups. Somebody falling sick could mean death for the entire tribe or clan, that was the end, you'd be done for. Um, but what did these people do? They found time for art. They, were people, they, they needed to feed themselves every day. They could probably, as most people did until the 19th century in the West and in most of the world, they could see, they could give birth to 12 children in their lifetime and only see one or two of them or none of them live to adulthood. Um, they had few physical resources, they couldn't really mine in any significant way, they had to chip tools out of stone, they had no metal working, they had nothing basically, except what they could find around them, shells, rocks, wood, animals, any animals that at this time, most of the animals were preying on humans and not vice versa, uh, because they were surrounded, as I said, by giant hyenas that, that were, you know, were this tall, the size of a pony, cave bears, cave lions, all of these animals, they were called mega fauna, they were massive, they were all huge, even a mammoth would, you know, stomp on you or gore you, and you'd be very, it would take an entire tribe to take one down. So, the point is, these people, they had all of these hardships, but they had time for artists, there, was, there were people in that society who had the time, or were given the time, or allowed the time, to go into the cave and to learn how to be artists, to learn how to draw and even if this, we don't, again we don't know if this was something for the public such as it was at the time or something that only one or two people were ever allowed to see the fact remains that somebody 32,000 years ago in an incredibly impoverished society thought artists and art was worthwhile and uh, this is the urge that I think any artist here or anybody creative here today um, can relate to, I think, you know, the fact that we have to do these things, it comes from inside us and uh, sometimes we don't get rewarded for it, sometimes we get pilloried and castigated for it, uh, but we still do it and, uh, and it's still an important part of any kind of functional society. Any society that's worth being called a society has creativity and freedom of expression and uh, time for things that don't seem productive at the time. There's nothing less productive than art. Um, but, and there's, there's, there are a few people less productive than artists, as again, as I'm <laughs> sure you know if you know artists or if you are one, um, or if you've ever tried to work with them or get them to turn up on time or keep to time. Um, you know, it's like, you know, proverbially herding cats, banging your head against the wall, whatever analogy you want to use, uh, pissing into the wind, and so on, all of these things. Um, but artists are important and art is important and um, the societies that have been severely fucked up have been the ones that have not found time for creativity and beauty and fucking around doing things that aren't productive. Uh, so yeah, that's about nine minutes, that's my thesis and I'm sticking to it and uh, that will do for now, thank you for listening.